Hey there, it's Board Game Dave, and today we're talking about my time at Level Up Retreat this past weekend in Woodbridge, New Jersey. I was there from Friday to Sunday, and I had a fantastic time playing so many games with so many wonderful people, uh, and it was such a great time. I wanted to share some of my experiences with you. Now, just as a quick disclaimer, I was comped a standard badge and a VIP badge from Alex from Board Game Co., who helps to organize and run the whole thing. So just so you know, I had free entry, but uh, drove down there and uh, stayed at the hotel on my own. Uh, time. So I feel like there's so much I could say about Love Warp Retreat, so to keep things organized, I'm going to break it down into three main sections. The games that I played at Love Warp, the people that I got to meet, and then the convention itself. So we'll start with uh, the games that I played. So the first thing I did on Friday was play in this World Series of Board Gaming mini tournament qualifying game of Brass Birmingham, which I had signed up for. I was super excited to play. It's one of my favorite games. I think my number three favorite game, or somewhere in my top five. Uh, and I had a fantastic time playing this game with people who for the most part, knew the game really well and had lots of experience playing it. And it was great and it was really tight at the end and I was in second place by just a little bit, but had a great time playing Brass Birmingham as the first thing I did basically at Level Up Retreat. Then I played Fluffy Dragons with Alejandro from Lamp Games. He's uh, prototyping and developing this game that's coming to Kickstarter, I think, uh, later this month, believe. So uh, stay tuned for more details about Fluffy Dragons. Then I met a friend named Adam. So he uh, met me in the library and we were checking out some of the games there. And we ended up playing Kites three times in a row. Kites is a cooperative card playing game where you've got these um, sand timers. It's a real time thing where you're playing cards to flip the timers and you don't want the timers to run out. So very chaotic, super fun uh, game. Then I taught Adam Shifting Stones, which is one of those games that I'm going to bring everywhere I go and teach people Shifting Stones because I think it's so clever and a game that people really haven't heard of. Uh, so I, I really appreciate and enjoy the opportunity to introduce people to Shifting Stones, which I've talked about many, many times on my channel. Uh, and then I showed Adam Strike, which is a very, very fun game that Ravensburger sent to me uh, recently. So I was playing Strike with him. And then I saw Jeff uh, from Foster the Meeple and waved him over since he wasn't playing a game. And then the three of us played Strike together as well. Uh, after that, we went down to the vendor area and I played this game called Mission Control Critical Orbit, which is a 15 minute game. There's a timer involved where one person is basically, oh gosh, in a space capsule that's running out of oxygen. And he is trying to communicate to us without seeing what we're doing. And he has up to, I suppose, three crewmates back on Earth in different parts of Earth, like India and Texas. And he's telling us what he needs and we're shouting out things and he's rolling dice. And we're using those numbers from the dice to complete uh, various puzzles. So I was doing this sort of Tetris thing and then another person I was playing with was doing like a Sudoku thing and then somebody else was making these bar graphs. Very mm, interesting and chaotic and a little bit stressful, but uh, very fun, interesting game that I think was being demoed. Might be a new game. I'm not sure too much about the specifics, but I did play that with uh, Jeff from The Dragon's Tomb, which was super, super fun. Uh, let's see, then I played Shifting Stones with uh, Jonathan and Mackenzie and Jeff from Dragon's Tomb again. Again, got to show somebody Shifting Stones, which is always fun. Then we played some Cluster, which is the game with the magnets and the string. Super hilarious, very, very fun game. Uh, two games of Cluster. After that, I think we went to dinner and then came back and then I played some Blob Party with a big group of people. Blob Party is, oh, it's like a party word game where you try to you know, uh, come up with words to fit a prompt and if you say the same word on your little card as somebody else, then you blob together. And the whole goal of the game is for everyone to eventually blob into one giant mass. It's cute, it's really simple. Um, little party game and then I played a much better well-designed game, I think, <laughs> party game, word game, called So Clover. Now, this is a game I've heard so much talk about, and I finally got a chance to play So Clover, and it was really, really clever. Uh, it can go a little bit long. I'm not even sure what the original rules are. We played where every player um, basically does their puzzle, reveals it, and then we solve their puzzles, and that's it. But essentially, how would I explain So Clover? I'll put up a picture here, but basically, each player has this plastic clover thing, and then they have these squares that have four words on the four sides. And basically, you're going to randomly arrange them onto your plastic grid, and then for the two words on each side, you have to come up with a word that kind of combines or alludes to those two words and come up with a one word 
uh, you know, uh, prompt or whatever, right? <laughs> At that point, you're gonna scramble up your four words, your four word cards, add another card, and then shuffle, 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 and then show it to everybody else, and then everybody else is gonna work together to solve your puzzle, or rearrange it the way you had it. It's very clever, and it's, the game is so tricky. They, they definitely throw in some uh, words to throw you off. I really, really enjoy that. And then I played, the last game of Friday was a game called Monikers, which is, we used to call it Fishbowl and playing youth group back in the day, but basically, Monikers is a whole bunch of, you know, phrases or words or whatever. And the first round, oh gosh, what is it? First round is like, is it charades? I forget. You you give clues until somebody guesses it, and then the second round, uh, after you've gone through the whole deck or whatever, you um, mime it? No, that's not right. What is it? Then it's... Then you mime it, you act out it, I think. And then the third round is you say a one word clue and everyone has to guess it. Anyway, it's Monikers. You've probably played it in one form or another at some point in your life, maybe, but anyways, it's Monikers. It's great, it's a riot. We were laughing hysterically. It was also very late at night and Jeremy Howard from Man Vs. Meeple was there with us and he's super funny, so it was great. Really, really fun, uh, nice way to round out the night. On Saturday morning, the first thing I did was head down to the main playing area to play the special edition of Castles of Burgundy. And we're talking, this was, like the absolute most blinged out possible game of Castles of Burgundy. It had the, I don't even know, are they painted little 3D figurines for like the animals and the buildings and the castles, all the 3D components and the landscape tiles, it was insane. I mean, and the expansions, we played with the vineyard expansion, which was really fun. Uh, it was just such an insane production. I think the MSRP is like $300, maybe it's more, I don't know. This was totally a next level, extraordinarily bougie version of Castles of Burgundy, which is uh, one of my uh, favorite games, it's in my top 50, I believe. Uh, maybe somewhere in the 30s. I really enjoy Castles of Burgundy. It can go a little bit long for my taste, but it's a great game. So we raced down there to play, uh, since it was actually set up uh, on one of the tables as like a free demo game. So anyway, we played that, it was great. I didn't do very well, but I really had a good time with it. My favorite part of the special edition of Castle Burgundy is definitely the animals on the little farm tiles. They're super cute. It was great. It's, it's like a little, you know, farmer toy thing you would have as a kid. So really, really nice. Uh, from there, I went straight to another World Series of Board Gaming mini tournament of Splendor, and I actually won that game, although I do have a lot of Splendor experience, as you may or may not know. So I won this game of Splendor, which took me to the, I don't know what the next thing was, like the finalist round or semifinals, I'm not really sure. Played Splendor, won that, uh, and then I played So Clover again, which was great. Then we played the Fox Experiment. So uh, I ended up teaching this game, which I've played three times, and I'll tell you what, I was saying this as I was teaching the game, there is such an enormous difference between playing a game and knowing the game pretty comfortably, you know, well enough to play it well, and teaching the game, which I've, there's so much more you need to know about a game to teach it, like setup, first of all, is huge. And just all these little small questions that came up, like, I didn't know the rules, so anyway, I brushed up on the rules and taught this game of Fox Experiment, which, as you may remember, was one of my favorite games that came out last year in 2023. So I do really enjoy the game. And even with people who were playing for the first time, it was a four player game, three of the people uh, were playing it for the first time. I was teaching it to all three of them. And it didn't take a terribly long time. And you know, the teach is a little bit overwhelming, but the actual play is so smooth and there's so much synchronous uh, activity going on during the rounds. So Fox Experiment, is great. Then I played Doodle Dash, which I love the concept of this game. Basically, it's like, oh, I don't know, Pictionary, any kind of speed drawing game, but uh, basically uh, the guesser, you know, holds up a card, they don't see it, and they say whatever it says, Olympics or something, right? And then everybody, as fast as they can, draw something, and uh, long story short, basically, you know, the first person that finishes grabs this thing, and the second person that finishes stops everybody else. And then starting with the person who finished first, and presumably has the most rushed, not very good drawing, reveals their drawing to uh, you know the guesser, and then if they don't get it, the next person gets a try, and so on and so forth. So it's a speed drawing game, and I feel like I did really well. I won the game, but yeah, I kind of really like speed drawing, it turns out, because I feel like it's all about like getting to the crux of what the word is, but anyway, uh, it's called Doodle Dash, really fun. Uh, then I had such a wonderful time playing um, a game called Nana, which is also called Trio, which is a Japanese uh, trick-taking game, right? 
Uh, not exactly. It's kind of like Go Fish and a memory game. Anyway, Paula Deming from Things Get Dicey taught it to us and I had such a great time playing with Paula first of all, but also this really creative game where, and I have a terrible memory, so this is not very good for me as far as being good at it, but uh, you have cards number one through 12 from low to high and long story short, you're just trying to almost like go fish, say, show me your lowest card and you know, Paula, show me your lowest card and you're trying to make a set of three. It's more interesting than that description, but it's a really good game. We ended up playing that twice because I felt like I understood it more the second time. Then Paula taught us a game called Rebel Princess, which was a trick-taking game where one of the suits is princes and you don't want to get princes, right? They're trying to suit you and woo you and you are rejecting their proposals. So uh, that's that's what you're trying to do throughout the course of the game. Really clever. Uh, each round there's like a special ability or special game rule breaking condition that comes into play. So uh, it's interesting. It's really good. Uh, and then I played uh, two games of Forks, which is a game that was sent to me by the designer. I'll leave a link down in the description to the BGG page if I can. It's the second edition of this game. Forks is really curious. It's really interesting. I think all of us that played, we're all like, you know, gamer gamers. All of us at the end of the first game, were like scratching our heads like, wow, this is really interesting. It's it's basically like a low to high mechanism where it's it's a, gosh, it's a card drafting game. So you've got these five suits, you pick a card, pass it on, you get another card, and then the third card goes into the middle. And the cards in the middle decide which cards are valuable and which cards are going to penalize you. So it's a very interesting game. I'll review it and explain it better uh, at some point, but that was Fork's second edition. And then the last game we played Saturday night was a game called Just One, another very clever party game where one person is trying to guess a word and everybody gives a one word clue. But the catch is, before the guesser gets to see the words you wrote down, you share them with all the other clue givers, and if any of them match, you have to erase them and they don't get those clues. So you have to think outside of the box, but not so far outside the box that the person has no idea what you're talking about. Very clever game. So that was Saturday night, although I will mention that. So I had played Strike the other day, right? Uh, Carmen, who I met at Level Up, asked to borrow my copy of Strike because she saw it in my bag that I was carrying around. And apparently they played Strike like 15 times after I'd gone to bed. They liked Strike so much. So Strike is a huge hit with everyone I've taught it to. I actually used to play it with a dice tray and a whole bunch of spare dice that I had lying around. But uh, I will say there's something much more satisfying about using the actual, you know, Colosseum uh, in the actual version of Strike. So it's a really, really good game. I highly recommend checking out Strike uh, if you don't know that game already. And that takes us to Sunday. Now, Sunday was a bit of a shorter day. It was sort of winding down by the afternoon. But the first thing I did that morning was play the semifinal or whatever game, which was randomly chosen, I think, and it was Lost Ruins of Arnak. Now, this is a game that I played several times back when it first came out. I think it was like 2019, maybe. It's a deck building slash worker placement game and you're fighting monsters. It's very like an Indiana Jones theme. And I liked it, but I don't remember being really wowed by the design. It's not like the most innovative game, at least in my impression of it. But I will say, in preparation for playing in this little mini tournament, I read up on the rules and I actually really enjoyed it this time. Like it clicked for some reason this fifth time playing it and I liked it more this time around. So yeah, I had fun. Uh, I didn't do particularly well. I tied for last in a four player game, which it was okay, you know, I was in third. <laughs> so, but I really had a good time with that. I think, I think the uh, game was actually more clever than I realized with the uh, buying tools in the market row and then, oh gosh, I don't know what the other side, those other cards are called. But anyway, it was really clever. I, I think understanding the game inside and out, you know, like reading through the rule book made me understand and appreciate the game more. So anyway, Lost Ruins of I really liked it. And I know that my friend Gary has, is it two expansions that came out? One has asymmetric powers, and then I don't know what the other one does. But now I'm actually really keen to try it with the expansions because I've heard it makes the game so much better. So, Lost Ruins Varnak. Then I played a game called Scribble Me This with the co-designer, whose name is Zach Guido, which, quick tangent, so he saw me wearing my Snarky Puppy sweatshirt, and we got to talking about Larnell Lewis, who's the drummer of the band, and then progressive like metal gent bands and the drummers that are in those bands, like Matt Halpern and Matt Gartskin, all these things, and we had such a great chat about music, first of all, and then sat down to play his game. So, Zach, great taste in music, and I hope he plays the drums. Um, but anyway, uh, Scribble Me This is part riddle solving, part drawing pictures. So, everybody gets like two, um, prompts, right? And then we draw it. And then 
uh, all the prompts have an associated riddle basically. So we shuffle up all those riddles and then display the riddles and show the pictures and try to figure out which uh, picture goes with which riddle, which is kind of interesting. So then you score points accordingly. Very clever game. It was, again, designed by uh, Zach Guido and then Steve Finn, or Dr. Finn, I think is, uh, yeah, Dr. Finn who did Biblios and Herbaceous and Floriferous, all these other games. So anyway, really excited for my friend Zach and this game that he came up with. So uh, that was Scribble Me This. Then I got to play Wormspan, Wormspan with Jonathan and Mackenzie from Terra Dice and Jeff from Dragons 2. Uh, and it was fantastic. So Jonathan and Mackenzie had gotten a review copy. So uh, I, they were one of the few people I think at Level Up who had Wormspan and literally, oh my goodness, without exaggerating, probably 30 different people stopped by to watch the game and ask us questions. And it was so funny because Probably over 20 times we heard the question, you know, well, how's this different than Wingspan? And it was so great because Jonathan was like very kindly and patiently, you know, explaining the game over and over to people who are asking. But it was kind of a running joke that people kept coming over and asking, oh, is this kind of like Wingspan or what you like better? But of course, that's to be expected. Wormspan is a very hyped game and following, uh, you know, a very esteemed pedigree from Wingspan, people want to know what are the differences and which game's better. Now, I have a lot to say, but I think I really enjoyed Wormspan. I thought it was fantastic. I, I thought it was great. Um, you know, almost an improvement from Wingspan in every way. I, maybe I wouldn't go that far, but anyway, yeah, I'd have to play it a few more times, but I'd like to do a comparison video at some point. But, you know, suffice to say, I really, really enjoyed it. I, I liked a lot of the changes. I'll go into the changes at some point, I'm sure. So anyway, Wormspan, really great. I'm so glad I had a chance to try it out. And I probably would like to add it to the collection, although I've been slowing down on buying games, but Wormspan is really, really good. So, uh, and then the last game I played uh, at level up was Scout, which is another great uh, little trick-taking game with a really clever twist where you can't change the cards in your hand and um, you can't rearrange them. And you're trying to play sets and runs and so on and so forth. Scout is a really good game. I played a lot with my family, so. And then that was it. So those are the games that I played at Level Up. Now let's talk about some of the people that I got to hang out with. So obviously I got to spend time with and hang out with and talk to and play games with lots and lots of incredible people at Level Up Retreat, both you know, in the content creation space and just people who were there to game, obviously. Um, but some of the most notable people that I got to hang out with as far as people in the industry or you know media creation side of things was Alex from Board Game Co. who played Castle Burgundy with us and Professor Meg who I got to play some party games with and Jonathan and Mackenzie from Terra Dice and Jeff from Dragon's Tomb and Wes from Quackalope and uh, Jenny from That's What Jenny Said and oh goodness Jeff and Jamie from Foster the Meeple were there and I'm sure I'm missing people, but there were so many wonderful people that I got to spend time with. And that was like the biggest highlight from Level Up Retreat um, going into, I guess, the convention in general was just, first of all, it's a really small convention, which was kind of really nice. So when I first walked into the main gaming space, I was kind of surprised because I was like, oh, like this is it. Like it's just this one hall, basically, you know, it was, it was in a hotel. So it was one of those hotel, you know, conference rooms. And it was great. So, you know, the whole time you're playing, you're looking around the hall and seeing all these people that you've seen on YouTube videos and stuff. And even the board game library, really, really small. And you got to kind of bump into people there and talk about games. And yeah, it was a very like cozy, intimate environment. When I first saw Jeff and Jamie, uh, Jamie mentioned that like, you can't hide here. You know, if you're playing a game and somebody wants to come say hi to you, they'll find you and say hi to you, which is very different from, you know, PAX or Origins where it's just a ton of people hanging out. and you know, I, I wouldn't be able to find somebody I was looking for at a PAX or an Origins, but at Level Up, I mean, you're gonna bump into pretty much everybody who's at Level Up Retreat over the course of the weekend. So I love that part of it. I think it was Friday night, uh, we went out to dinner. It was Jeff and Jonathan McKenzie and Jenna and I, we went to this Thai place because Jeff grew up around that area. So he had great restaurant recommendations. Anyway, went to this Thai place and we just had so much fun. It was just so nice to sit and talk with people who, you know, and maybe this is specific to me, but um, people who make YouTube videos, you know, not for a living, but you know, uh, on the side. And I really enjoyed being able to talk shop with these people about, you know, lighting and setting up a set and you know, the filming schedule and just so many things that you can't converse about stuff like this with, you know, the average everyday person. They wouldn't know what you're talking about or wouldn't be able to relate. So. 
all that to say, it was really great to spend time with and share gaming experiences and just memories with people who I look up to so much in the industry and learned so much from, uh, you know, passively and actively by talking to them. So I loved it. Um, if you are interested in Level Up Retreat, if you want a smaller, more personal, more uh, relaxed, you know, gaming focused convention, I highly recommend Level Up Retreat. I had a blast there. Um, PAX is probably my favorite retreat and it's hard to beat that because it's so close to me in Philly and I hang out with my sister when I'm there because she lives in Philly. So it, I'm biased toward PAX, but Level Up Retreat was just fantastic point on my shirt here and yeah I, I really think you should check it out so you know i don't know if there's a future date i know they had talked about there being a september uh potential uh, another level up retreat so either way check out the website see if there's a, another event coming up soon but yeah i highly recommend it and by the way there was so much star wars stuff there going on it was really interesting there was some sort of star wars like i don't want to say cosplay because it was so much more than that it was really intense like costumes so like Darth Vader and all these stormtroopers and Chewbacca and R2-D2 and it was insanely good so they would just walk around the playing area <laughs> it was a hoot I got a great picture and videos of these characters I'll show you but anyway yeah level up was fantastic so yeah I highly recommend that you uh check out level up retreat in the future and maybe you'll see me there oh and by the way speaking of setting up a set you may have noticed that my background looks a little bit different than it has in all my prior videos so I came back from level up retreat Sunday evening and it came downstairs to the basement to be absolutely shocked and floored and totally flabbergasted and gobsmacked by this unbelievable makeover to my set, which Hannah single-handedly transformed and revolutionized into something absolutely professional grade and beautiful and fantastic. And I love it so terribly much. I love the plants. I love this light that's hanging here. I, I wish I could show you a little bit more of it. Um, she organized my games. It's just, and it painted the whole wall, by the way, and it looks so good. So please, leave a comment down there uh, saying how amazing you think it looks. It is a far cry from this old thing, which I have a little nostalgic, you know, something for me. You remember these days, <laughs> sideways, but yeah, I would say that this is much more, uh, uh, just looks so good and professional and aesthetic and great. So I am very, very, very thrilled to have this amazing space to come down here and film with. So uh, yeah, you can look forward to a much better backdrop in all my future videos. So anyways, wow, I've been rambling on and on and on. I really was trying to keep this very short, <laughs> a very quick, short recap of Level Up, but as tends to be the case, these videos sometimes go a little bit long. So I am trying my best not to bore you and talk too fast and overwhelm you with information, but sometimes that can't be helped. And when you've played as many games as I did over the course of those three days, which I don't remember how many games uh, it was all said and done, there's a lot to talk about. So anyways, thank you so much for sticking around till the end. I hope you enjoyed the video. I hope you enjoyed this fantastic, beautiful background. And yeah, if you have any suggestions for how I can make my videos better, guys, I'm always trying to improve. I, I want to put out content that you appreciate and feel, you know, is tailored to your specific uh, preferences and needs and stuff. So, you know, as always, just leave things in the comments. I respond and read, read and respond to every single comment on my channel. So if you have anything to say or just want to say hi, please do. Um, if I met you at Level Up and I, I didn't mention you, I'm so sorry. There were so many people that I got to hang out with. So uh, yeah, I, I apologize if I missed uh, bringing you up. But anyways, all that to say, I had a wonderful time at Level Up and I hope that uh, you come out to a future Level Up retreat. So anyways, I'm done going on and on. I hope you have a wonderful week. Take care. Happy gaming. Bye. Babe, come get it. Is it a bug? Yeah. A big one? Yeah. Is it one of those big hundred leggers? Huh? What the heck is this? Oh, wow. That's so sick. Oh.